Oh, good morning. How are you guys doing? Happy Wednesday, midweek. Welcome to the study group. This is the CompTIA um, A+. Uh, I said A+. It is not A+. It is Data Plus um, exam. Sorry. I was helping a friend study for his A+, exam. So, uh, nonetheless, good morning. So, let's get a couple of things out of the way first. Uh you are in the right study group. This is a group where we come in, we share ideas that have to do with the exam. Um, we typically do this three times a week, um, just so you know. We typically stick with the Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, or Sunday, depending on what the group needs um, and my time availability. So in your bottom right-hand corner is a purple timer. That timer started at 45 minutes. We study for 45 minutes. Once that is done, then we go through and we do a couple of quick quizzes. Uh, so you'll have 45 minutes, you'll go on a five minute break. You'll come back from that and then you'll do your quiz. Five, we'll do our quiz together. Once we get done with our quiz, then we are out of here. It is 8.04 Central Standard Time. Let's go ahead and get started. If there's any questions that you have, anything that you see on the screen um, that you, for whatever reason, uh, need me to go back or repeat or if you can't see it or something like that, just let me know. Um, I am more than happy to go back and, and do things. Quick information about what we use. This is the Kindle app. We are actually studying the book. So the book looks like this. In case you want to get the hard copy, we are studying the Data Plus Study Guide. Not a big book. It is made by Mike well, Cybex made it. Mike Chapel is the person who wrote it. So we are studying his information and we'll go ahead and get started. So inside of the Kindle app, what we do is two things. So yellow we use to highlight anything we think might be on the exam. We use the color blue. Uh, blue is typically something that you would use to be able to explain to someone specifically what is a data analyst um, or what you do as a job. Um, so once we go from there, we have pink. We use pink to be able to test ourselves. 
Um, and when we're doing quizzes and things like that inside of the book, this is what we will use. And finally, orange is more of a personal note that I take things that um, are very specific to me that I would not share with other people. So let's go ahead. We stopped on page 115, which we're on right now. And I, re I recall us going through and him talking about with the Excel, uh, with the Google Sheet document. With Google Sheets, you have the capability to do CSV files and TSV files. At that time, I had never heard of a TSV file. So um, we will go ahead and uh, mosey along. How are you guys doing? Like, uh, hopefully your weekend went well. I saw you on Monday and then we're in the mid portion of the week. Um, I don't know who needs to hear this, but I'm just going to put it out there. A case today, you might be doubting yourself for whatever reason. Remember that your success rate is 100%. It was something Steve Harvey said and... Today, it rings very true. When I was meditating this morning, I was thinking about our brain is easy to go to the things that we don't do well. Whether in my case, um, I'm working on my body and working on my health, um, as I stated, I would do at the beginning of the year. And so the brain is quick to remind you hey, you haven't achieved this goal or you still look like this. You still have a stomach. Not to mention that I've lost almost 20 pounds, close to, I'm at 18. But in that process, the body goes through it and, and the mind, <laughs> it's just amazing how quickly uh, we can discredit the things that we've done. And so I was reminded of Steve's comment that your success rate is 100%. Every time that you thought you were going to get evicted, every time that you thought that you were losing out, every time that you thought that you weren't going to make it, up until this point, you have made it. So your success rate, or as he said, you're batting 100. So at this point right now, I just wanted to put that out there because maybe somebody is doubting themselves, maybe with this exam or whatever. Just understand... You've made it this far, and we're going we gonna to get to the study, and so don't worry about that part, but you made it this far, and we'll continue to keep making it, so hold on. All right, so what are we talking about here? I was curious about the width limitations too, when it comes to a specific file, if there is like a character limit, not necessarily like a, a limit limit, but like, is there a character limit? I wonder what he means by padding the values because he says then you must pad values that are shorter than the maximum length. Okay. No, you guys are fine. Come on in. I'm glad that you're here. We just, we're just getting started. We're, 
you know, a couple of minutes into it, like literally we're on our first page. We had to give some words of, of encouragement to people because we want to make sure everybody inside of here at least has a, you got to have a positive mindset first. It starts with the mindset and I was working on that. So I was working on that inside of my, in my iPad y'all. So. Hmm, that's interesting. We should probably put that in blue. Let's rock back to, um, I mean, in yellow. Let's, and let's scurry on down where we are. This is, what is a JSON file? I could see maybe not necessarily, like, I don't know that they would give us JSON file. I could see them saying, what is JavaScript object notion file? I can see that being a thing. example of a JSON file. This one was specific to our veterinary example that he's been using throughout this chapter. I can see this one as well and him because you would recognize X, XML, but you may not recognize extensible markup language as what XML is. It's possible. We should, we should watch out for that.
Mm. Okay. Import the JSON package in order to read files formatted as JSON. Okay, so somewhere on this person's computer was a JSON file with this information in it. F drive. Okay, I'll explain what I'm doing. So if you are not familiar, if you are here, you are here for one of two reasons. You are here because you just enjoy watching me and maybe you're a family member and you've got me on in the background or you are someone who wants to become a data analyst and most likely you have some experience with Python um, maybe if it's only at a novice level of dealing with python you can at least read it so we will talk to the people or persons that are here that maybe doesn't even know what any of this means it just looks like a bunch of words on the screen so when you read python the portion that you see at the top here that is in green okay that is not read by so python is a language and it's a way that computers we can talk to computers so think about us speaking english right now as a language and in doing so you could understand me if you speak english and i can understand you if you type in english in the box with python it's us talking to a computer Okay, we can agree on that. Now, the, the, the green part that you see here that he's explaining where it says import the JSON package in order to read files formatted as JSON, that is not something that's read by the computer. Computer could care less about this. As soon as it sees this pound sign on the front of it, it means don't pay attention to this. Those notes are written so that if you're the person who reads this code understands whoever wrote this, what they were doing. So, like, if he were to write import JSON and then this other part right here where all of these parts that are like this lime green color, um, then this right here would be what the program understands. Everything in the light green, that is just him writing to us so that we understand. So, read um, in each line in the JSON file. So, the, the computer would read import JSON. So, somewhere on that person's... Uh, computer, there is a file named JSON or JSON file. In that, he said, and within that JSON file, there's a portion that's called c2pets.json. So he's telling the system, go into this file. Here is what, what file inside of, I'm sorry, let me start over. Go into the JSON folder. Inside of that folder, there is a file and that file is called c2pets.json, pull up that file. The, it's on the F drive. So his computer knows exactly where to go find it and goes and finds the file. Then he tells it print pets because inside of that JSON file, there is a section in there where it says pets. It's named pets. Just like if you were to open a file on your desktop, you have a, you have a folder and you have a file in the folder. And all he's doing is opening it and saying, read what's in the folder. And that's what all of this information is here. And then in that pet zero, um, so pet zero in computer language, zero actually exists as a number. So it is not like we think zero means none. It, that's not the case in computer language. Zero is actually holds a space. So a zero and then one. So he's saying here, pets zero. He's saying, give me whoever is listed as pet zero. So pet zero in this case is a dog named Jack. So that's what all of this is in reading it in Python. 
for someone who may not understand what's here. You know, because we don't want to assume. Now, when it comes to R, I am not uh, versed in R. So I can't, like, it, it's in the sense saying, it's as if I was saying, you know what? I, I don't even speak even partial R right now. So it's similar, at least it looks similar. So low library to, okay. So tidyverse, I know what tidyverse is. Okay. Oh, it's written, it's written very much different than Python. And it actually, it prints out different than Python too. I mean, this part right here prints out similar, but it has all of these like tags on the side as opposed to Python, which doesn't have the tags. It'll just print out what's in there. Compared, like, you see this part right here, and then when, like, here, when you look at it in in Python, Python doesn't have all of these little tags on the side that says, like, pet ID is a tag. Uh, it reminds me of HTML, actually. Oh, that is because it's XML. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. That that makes sense. I was like, wait, that this this little tags on the outside of stuff that didn't make sense. Okay, so this is R, which I mean R is at least like it it prints it out in a like a structured way, like you would normally see in a in a value of a folder. But okay, this makes sense. That's why I was like these tags on the outside. Okay, so it's XML. That's why. And look at that, HTML shows up anyway. I could see, as we have done in the past, I could see there being a usage for uh, understanding what hypertext markup language is. Um, and I, I know we know HTML, um, but we should also know the names of it. This right here might be something to put in blue, actually. Where he says HTML serves as the foundation for how people interact with the World Wide Web. Um, maybe for somebody who has never, didn't even know what an HTML, what that even means. Um, again, most people who are in this study group understands at least the term html xml um json those type of things they at least understand those terms um they may not know what all of them mean in the actual word like hypertext markup language they may not remember that but they do know what an html is because they've dealt with it at some point but that doesn't mean that everybody because this particular uh study assumes that you have no prior knowledge and that's part of the reason why he goes through to explain things the way that he does is because there is no assumption that you know anything um, at all so he has to teach you what those things are
And I just learned something because I, I when I saw this immediately, I thought HTML, not XML. And I, that's what I was telling you guys. I was like, this, this reminds me of HTML with all these tags. Um, I had to take an HTML course in college, in, in the college that I'm in. I'm a, a sophomore at SNHU online. And, and one of the classes we had to take was an HTML class. And I am telling you, I fought, I really did. I fought that class. I'm not even going to joke with you. I fought that class so hard. Um, actually taking it and doing well in the class because I did not want to learn it. <laughs> um, I don't know why I think that I am going to become a data scientist without having to learn the disciplines that require that. And maybe there's somebody else here as well going through the exact same thing, but I just, for whatever reason, want to believe that I'm just going to become a data scientist by reading through a couple of books. It quote unquote can't be that hard. And that could be furthest from the truth. Becoming a data scientist is hard. It should be. It should be hard. It, it requires discipline. But what's interesting is that now I can look at this, though I did not want to take the class. Now I can look at it and I can understand what the things are because we had to learn them. And now it's, it, it's, it's just, it's surreal when you learn something. Like I don't think, I don't consider myself a master of HTML at all, but I do consider myself to have had some experience like an introductory experience of uh, HTML. It's funny, if you look inside of this, look at this line right here when he's talking about where this image is stored. So this image is stored on Amazon AWS servers. Well, we made it to a summary. When dealing with data, you need to think through the data values you're working with because doing so influences your choices of data type. When using structured data, you may be working with dates, numbers, text, currency, or alphanumeric data. Whether the data is discrete, continuous, or categorical, choosing the appropriate data type can help boost data quality.
It says, be wary of using currency specific data types that can lead to calculation errors. What is this? There's a reason why he highlighted it or underlined it, not sure why. For binary data, including audio, video, and images, you should use a blob data type. Could see that question being something like, what would, for the blob data type, I could see there being a question of, which one of the four choices, because I could see there being audio, video, and images, and something else like um, numbers, which one of these is not, which, which one of these should not be used in the blob data type? I could see that being a test question. Yeah, so just to explain what I'm doing when I come up with the questions is uh, that is a way to test the brain immediately. Uh, so you get a bit of information and you test yourself. Um, and so as we're going through like these exam essentials, uh, what we're getting ready to do when we get done with this is we're going to switch over to do our quiz. And what I started to realize is that we should start transitioning a little bit more to the quiz. Um, before we just have that little five minutes because that five minutes is really quick and for some people they they're very new to it so they don't have an opportunity to even think through what they've already done and maybe some people this is the time that they study is this one hour um, even though there should be more study time um, there definitely should be more study time uh, than that and, and I say that even for myself uh, you should be studying outside of here uh, And we have review questions anyway, so if the data element range is unknown, the data element that supports continuous data is necessary. All right, Enzo is building a database that will store flight information for his travel agency. He is adding a field to a table that will contain flight numbers. A flight number is a combination of a two character airline designator and or excuse me, and a one to four digit number. For example, United Airlines flight 769 between Chicago and San Francisco. Cisco has flight number UA for United Airlines 769, of course, for the flight number 
what data type would be most appropriate for this field? Alphanumeric. And we're going to make that pink because we're taking an exam. Madeline is building a medical transcription system which transcribes physicians' voice reports so that they can be easily read by other healthcare professionals. Which, which of the following data types is the most appropriate for her to select in order to store the raw recordings? Audio would be blocked. And why do we know that is because remember when I was repeating, these are, so you use pictures, audio, and video in blog. Rupert is working on implementing a general ledger system that can accommodate financial records in excess of 1 million. Which of the following data types is the most appropriate for him to select in order to store financial transactions? Hmm. I think it might be small money because numeric, I think, goes up to 1 million. I mean, money, I'm sorry. Money, I think, goes up to 1 million and then you can't go above that. And this says excesses are 1 million. Now, I could be wrong, but I'm going to take the chance. Hazel needs to store video recordings for subjects participating in a psychological experiment. There are 300 participants in the experiment and each session is 45 minutes long. Presuming the video is captured using a modern smartphone at a rate of 102, 102,400 kilobytes per minute, which of the following data types does Hazel need to select if she is storing the videos in a database? Um, I'm going to go with Blob as well for this. Alexander is doing research on liter literary works and wants to store the title, complete text, and community sourced ratings in a database. The longest book included in his study is Atlas Shrugged by Anne Rand, coming in at 1,168 pages. Presuming that Alexander is working in an Oracle database, which of the following data set data types should he choose? Let's see what the options are. I don't, I know it's not. I'm going to go with club on this one. Barnelli is analyzing De analyzing defects at a manufacturing plant in order to inform her work she tracks the number of defective control arms that come down the assembly line on an hourly basis okay what kind of data is represented by the number of defects I'm going to go continuous. Because what I know it is not is alphanumeric. And what I'm unsure of is if that would meet the... the I don't think that it's discrete because discrete would be knowing... Hold on, actually, when I read the, the question again, she tracks the number of defective control arms that came down the assembly line on an hourly basis. Huh, I'm actually going to change it to discrete. So let me change this. Now, even if I'm wrong, I was uncertain about the two, but the reason why I'm doing discrete is because she is doing the defective control arm. She's not looking at, you know, tons of different 
um, like different parts. She's looking at just the control arms themselves. All right, we have just over five minutes before you guys go on your break. I know time passes so quickly. Um, like literally, it seems like we just started. <laughs> uh, but time passes quickly. So. All right, Harun is choosing a pair of running shoes. In the past, he has found a size 10 to be too small and a size 10.5, 10 and a half, to be uncomfortable. While he would like to be able to order a size 10.25, it is simply not available as shoes are sold in half size increments. What kind of data is represented by shoe size? Hmm. Now that's making me second guess my last answer because discrete would mean that there is huh okay yeah it's making me second guess this answer now I'm going to stick with it but we are going to check question 6 and 7 MD is measuring her feet to help her figure out what shoe size to order. At 9.75 inches, that places her between a U.S. size 8 and a U.S. size 8.5. What kind of data does Armadea's measured foot represent? I'm going to go categorical. Connor is aggregating temperature information from 5,000 Internet of Things temperature sensors at desperate locations around his farm. What type of what type of measure in, is temperature and what is appropriate data type to contain these values? So temperature is going to be... Oh, we had this question in... Um, we had this question in our uh, quiz on the software. We had this question. Zara is conducting a survey to collect opinions about a recent the the theatrical release. She is kept she is capturing this via an open-ended text response field on a web form. What category of data does this represent? That is definitely not quantitative. I know that for certain. If we, did, if we don't get a chance to finish up when you guys go on break, we're just going to finish up taking this quiz. We won't switch over to like we normally do. We'll just finish this out and then grade it. If I don't even know how many questions he has here. Um, so I can at least just go through until we finish the, the, the quiz. And check number, date, receipt, and amount. What kind of data is Jed working with? That's, I would say structured. Amy is interested in exploring the Netflix viewing history, including profile name, title, description, device, country, playback, start times and play traces for her household navigating to the account export screen with which options should she select in order to facilitate analysis using the python programming language um given those choices
CSV or H. I'm going to go CSV. Not certain about that between that and XML, but I'm just going to stick with what I what I'm what I believe. That API right there is
unfortunately that's not the way that works. Welcome back, you guys. All right. Well, welcome back. We have five more minutes left together, and we are going to finish up this exam. Normally, we go over and do some other work, but we're just going to finish up this. So, which data format or what data format does the API require? I'm going to go JSON. Could be wrong, but I'm going to take a chance. I'm oh, sorry. We did not answer 14. All right. Mara is a data engineer tasked with the new systems integration. She has been given the following sample file to help her understand how to parse files of a similar type. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so I will give her a call um, when I get done uh, to check and see how things are going. Okay, well, just sit tight. It'll happen. Uh, hopefully you brought something to read while you're there. So if you have some time, sit down, relax, keep your blood pressure down. My mother is going to surgery, so she is texting me and I am responding in my glasses. So she knows what's going on and knows that I'm not uh, ignoring her. No. Okay. So if we had to make a quick decision. Chris is a financial analyst who wants to use Microsoft Excel to perform what-if analysis on data extracted from his corporate accounting system. To make the data extract easy to import, which of the following formats should he specify? CSV. Claire is a web developer working on a interactive website. While she is programming in JavaScript, which of the following file types is essential to test her work in a web browser? I'm going to go HTML. Claire has just received a spreadsheet of streaming media use data, and one of the columns contained the following data. Wait, did I miss a question? 
17. Oh, these are the, okay. Claire's is spreadsheet or streaming. One of the column contains the following data. Okay, got it. While the spreadsheet is displaying this data as a single piece of text, you guys have 15 seconds left. So we will put our tab here. We will stop right here when we come back. Like I said, I think it's 20 questions. Don't know. I'll see you guys this weekend. All right. Bye.